In this video, I will explain how the portrayal of indigenous peoples in sci-fi and their subsequent engagements with the genre contribute to indigenous futures and decolonisation. As it emerged during the late 19th century, science fiction was informed by and so articulated the imperialist structures of knowledges, power and possibilities that defined this period as the most treacherous of colonial expansion. Today, the genre is still obsessed with pioneering new planets and encounters with the alien other that frame space as the final frontier, reasserting colonial narratives into how we might imagine the future. How we imagine and depict our futures have real consequences. Often considered the first sci-fi movie in 1902, Georges Méliès' Le Voyage dans la Lune pokes fun at lunar colonisation, complete with violent war against extraterrestrial natives. Its groundbreaking special effects made the once extreme and fantastical boundary of space tangible, and so, Man on the Moon became plausible within the collective imagination. Before delving into the implications of colonial narratives to indigenous futures, it is important to consider how indigenous peoples have historically been represented in sci-fi. Cultural traditions and aesthetics of existing indigenous peoples have long been appropriated in sci-fi and fantasy to portray the alien other. The trope we're going to focus on is the Noble Savage. The Noble Savage is a wild human, presented as an earlier expression of human civilization that exists in harmony with nature. This powerful trope gives insight to how indigeneity is framed through a Western paradigm. This paradigm conceives human identity as superior to, and therefore outside, of nature. The indigenous person, harmonious to nature, is therefore considered primitive. Bell Hooks argues that imperialist nostalgia for the primitive is so powerful that it fixes the indigenous person temporally and places differentiating land ideologies at the crux of indigenous settler relationships. For Sartre, this fixation of the primitive onto the indigenous person constitutes a form of enslavement, enslavement which, according to Fanon, reproduces settler colonial forms of rule. Here, the identity of the noble savage prescribed by the coloniser negates indigenous futurity as the indigenous is held captive in time. In the 1930s emerged recognition of a need for colonised people and communities to claim back, affirm and value their own identities in order to reject assimilation, internalised racism and heal from colonial violence. This stance was called negritude and it was thought to be valuable expression of self-empowerment by reclaiming and revitalising pre-colonial social relations and cultural traditions. For indigenous peoples, this meant transcending a stoic perspective of their relationship to land that the very term indigenous connotes. Glenn Coulthard has termed this ethical orientation grounded normativity, where indigenous ontologies that perceive land as relationship provide foundations for indigenous struggles of self-determination. Land as relationship is threaded through what Grace Dillon termed indigenous futurism. Contrary to Dillon coining the term, indigenous futurism is not new, but forgotten, argues her daughter and indigenous director Elizabeth Laneman. She believes indigenous peoples have been telling science fiction stories from the beginning. Her film Path Without an End is an Ashinaabe steampunk film, which tells the timeless story of moon people who canoe the stars evading the insatiable spirit of Watiko. She animates natural and organic materials such as shells and wooden beads to deliberately convey indigenous understanding of nature as technology and humans as nature. Another indigenous director, Amanda Strong, utilises technology to transcend the anachronistic perspective of indigenous peoples. In her film Vidaban, these mobile rock devices become portals through which ancestral knowledge can be transferred and encourage reciprocal relationships with land, such as by tapping maple trees. Here, nature informs modes of resistance that liberate indigenous peoples from the primitive trope as they identify themselves as stewards of the land. Although nature once trapped indigenous identities under a colonial gaze, these indigenous portrayals of land as relationship unwind the colonial framing of indigenous identity in sci-fi, shaping new space necessary to radically envision indigenous futures and contribute to decolonisation.